And as always, we'll start with the reading of the law. Let's go to Exodus 20, 1 through 17. When we get it, brother, you can go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bound thou thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it Thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Okay, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, in Revelations 22, 14, and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates unto the city. For without our dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever love it, and make it a lie. Okay, brothers and sisters, we always start with the reading of the law to remind ourselves that the law is still good, and we have to obey them and keep them, and there's not, they have not been nailed to the cross. <clears throat> and I'd like to say good afternoon, brothers and sisters. And welcome once again to the Israel God Bible Study class. I'm Brother McKinley, the teacher for today, and my reader, Brother Norman. And as always, it's a pleasure to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day so we can edify each other in his holy word. Because that's what this is all about, brothers and sisters. And today's lesson, brothers and sisters, is personal conduct. Personal conduct. Because... It's a good thing, brothers and sisters, for us to get this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we get here at the Israel of God. However, this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is supposed to do something to us. It's supposed to change us from our old ways and return us, make us a new creature. It's supposed to change our behavior. Now, we say we're servants of God. Now, we're supposed to act like servants of God. And I don't care how much knowledge, understanding, wisdom you got, how much you know. If your behavior isn't right, you're still headed to the lake of fire. Because the Lord is not a respecter of person. He don't care what your position is. He don't care how much you have. If you're not living Christ-like, you are in trouble. So we're going to start this, brothers and sisters. And the reason why we do this lesson is because a lot of times I run into people that used to come here. And that one of the biggest things I would say, well, I don't, so-and-so is so-and-so. That's why I don't go there no more. 
I thought that the uh, 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 Israel of God was a righteous religious organization. But they got old no good so-and-so in there. I thought, well, the church is the place for no good so-and-so. Maybe we could turn them into something good. And I remind them also that the first demon Jesus cast out was in the church. So I tell them, you don't condemn the whole organization for one person. And when I see a brother and a sister or a sister that have been attacking them and, and here and has gone through something or somebody has done them wrong and they still come, I know that person is rooted. They're not letting nobody drive them away. But what we come here for is the word of God. Yes, Learn how to get salvation. Yes, sir. And that's what this is all about. So, I tell them, so don't condemn the organization for one person's bad behavior. But let's go to Mark, the first chapter. Let's read that, what Jesus cast out the first demon in the church. Mark 1, and we're going to pick it up at 14. Mark 1 and 14. Mark 1 and 14. And go ahead, brother. Now, after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay, and this is what, uh, go ahead. And saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. And that's what you have to do, repent and believe. You got to believe that this gospel is true. But skip to 21. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And people read this, and they look all over there. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And something else, he, he taught. He didn't hoop. He didn't holler. He taught. He gave the people something that they could use. Go ahead. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as scribes. And of course he did, because he dictated the whole Bible. So, of course, he taught his one that had authority. Go ahead. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Go ahead. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. Now, this, this man was in the church. He had an unclean spirit, but he confessed with his mouth who Jesus was. So that's why we know you got to do more than just confess with your mouth in order to get salvation. But go ahead, brother. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. Go ahead. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Okay. And thing is, brother and sisters, this demon was in this church. This man with this demon was in this church. And nobody knew that he was in there because he wasn't acting a fool. He was just sitting there with the rest of the people. But Jesus didn't condemn the whole place. He dealt with that person. He dealt with that person. That's why Jesus said, let the wheat grow with the tares, and he will separate that. But also, brothers and sisters, that, that unclean spirit, when they say it was in him, he wasn't physically in him, but he was influencing his mind. Because those evil spirits, they're just like the Lord. They stand at the door and knock. And if you let them in, oh, they come in and they're going to sup with you. Just like the Lord would. But the Lord would feed you some knowledge and understanding, something to get you salvation. And that evil spirit, that demon, going to feed you some information. Let you know how to get into the lake of fire. But still, brothers and sisters, a lot of times when there's people in the church and they're not doing what they're supposed to do, and we see it, we have to deal with it. We have to deal with it. We can't let it go. You can't let sin just run, run rampant. 
Because you do, it will affect everybody. And, this, and one person, bad behavior or misconduct can affect a whole lot of people. But let, let's go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. When you have unruly people in the church, you have to deal with them. First Corinthians 5, we're going to pick it up at 1, 5 and 1. Go ahead, brother. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. So, apparently, and he said among the Gentiles, so, so, so Paul is speaking to Israel. So, apparently, we, we, we can... Get out of this, that this man's father must have died because if he, had, if he was still alive, it wouldn't be fornication. It would be adultery. So apparently, this man's father died. And instead of being a son to his stepmama, he decided he's going to be something else. And he didn't marry her. He probably couldn't marry her because people get to talking. So go ahead, brother. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that have done this deed might be taken away from among you. So he said, you all puffed up, you all mad. We ain't doing nothing about it. He said, he say, you should mourn that this deed be taken away from that you. You should do something about this. That sitting on the sidelines, murmuring about it, talking about it. If you see somebody doing wrong, brothers and sisters, if you want to go to that person. What good is it going telling everybody else if nobody else, if nobody's going to do anything about it? Right. You know, do something to cut it out, to stop it. But skip the, skip the six and go ahead, brother. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven, leaven if the whole lump? He said, a little leaven, that's sin. A little sin corrupts the whole lump. Once it starts to spread, because the first thing somebody's going to say, well, they let so-and-so do it. They let them get away with it, so I should be able to do it. Now, if you see it and you can fix it, fix it. But go ahead, brother. Purge out therefore the old living, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. See, Christ our Passover is sacrificed, but purge out, purge therefore out the old leaven. And that purging start with yourself. And Michael Jackson said, start with the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. Start purging that first. And then move on. But go ahead, brother. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Go ahead. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. He said, I wrote you not to keep company with fornicators. And fornicator, a fornicator is someone that's messing around and with no intention of getting married. And because adultery is if you're married, you can't have adultery and fornication. Got to be one or the other. But not just fornicators, though, but anybody anybody that's living ungodly. Go ahead, brother. Yet not all together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. He say, he say uh, not just the fornicators, not just fornicators, but everybody. And he's not talking about the people that you work with, because you can't get away from those people. You can't get away from the people in the world unless you Leave the planet, and you can't do that. Or commit suicide, and you can't do that. But what he's saying is, is if a brother or sister, don't, don't deal with them. Don't deal with them. Because what happens, brothers and sisters, if you let a little stuff go, it get worse and worse. Worse and worse. Just like now, 
with this sodomy. It's worse. It started off a little bit. Then we got that president that was before uh, 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 Donald Trump. He opened up the closet and let them all out. And now they're trying to put, if, if you're against it, they tried to put you in the closet. At one point, that, that, that was, that, that was a, people was hiding from, that was a, a shame. They weren't openly doing this stuff. But you let it go a little bit, then you stay start promoting it pretty soon. It's a right, but not according to the word of God. But go ahead, brother. Verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one, no, not to eat. He said, if a brother or sister called himself a Christian, and you, and, and you see them doing something that's not right, and you trying to, you went to them and talked to them, tried to get them to change their ways, and they won't, back up from them. Just back away from them, because the Lord might be having them marked. And we're going to show that later on in this lesson. But go ahead, brother. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? He says, don't worry about the people outside the church. They don't know better. But the ones inside that should know better, those are the ones. Those are the ones. Go ahead. But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So those that are outside church, God will take care of them. But that person, and the, the, the book called them wicked, if they won't change, get them from away, get them away from you because they will cause destruction. They will cause destruction. But let's go to Numbers 16. Number 16. So if you let one thing happen and just run rampant in the class, uh, uh, in the organization, it can damage a whole lot of people. If you call yourself a Christian, a servant of God, especially if you call yourself a leader, you can't be no respect of person. You can't have no favorites. You got to deal with them. Number 16 and 1. 16 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Now Korah, the son of his heart, the son of Kohah, the son of Levi and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Phileph, son of Reuben, took men. Okay, go ahead. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Now these men, these people were men of renown. They were people with status. These were, these were the, the, the princes of all the different tribes. They had position. They had status. The people looked up to them. But go ahead. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So everybody never got probably heard that. Y'all think y'all more than everybody else. Y'all ain't got the monopoly on the word of God. The first thing they try to tell you. But they came up, they guy came up against Moses and Aaron. So how about we are all holy. And these are the Levites, these are the Levites, these are the, this is the priests. But a lot of times, when you're teaching this word of God, and it take block from somebody that's in a position, 
they turn on you. They get mad because they feel like you putting yourself above them. Go ahead, brother. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And when Moses heard it, he fell on his face. And he prayed to the Lord. But go ahead. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. He said, even him he has chosen, he will call to come near unto him. Go ahead. This do, take your senses, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take much upon you, ye sons of Levi. So this, is Le this is Leviticus priest. This, this is Levi. Moses was a Levi also, but these are the priests coming up against Moses like that. And all Moses did was preach what the word, what, what the Lord told him to, to teach them. It wasn't Moses' own word. It was what Moses said. I mean, what, what the Lord told him to, to speak, that's what he spoke. That people I say, y'all, the Israel God, y'all think y'all, why, what make y'all think y'all know so more than everybody, so much more than everybody else? They probably because we read more than everybody else. And you know we reading it because everybody got their book open. And we reading what thus said the Lord. But you finish that seven? Yes, sir. Skip the twelve. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliel, which said, we will not come up. So Moses, like I said, these were, these were Levites. These were Moses' brothers. So Moses probably wanted to reason with them. So he called and he, he, called and he sent for them. And they said, we ain't coming up, man. Get you, man. We ain't coming up there. But go ahead. It is a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey. To kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Hey, there's a small thing you brought us out of the land, out, out of, you brought us up out of a land that flowing with milk and honey. They, they was in bondage. They was in servitude. He said, so we could die out here. But go ahead. And, and Moses didn't do that. The Lord did that. He brought them out of Egypt. Go ahead. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? Will we not come up? They say, not only did you not give us what you promised, you done blinded these folks with falsehood. Moses didn't promise them nothing. The Lord promised them. He'll bring them out of Egypt and take them into a land flowing with milk and honey. But see, that's what jealousy would do to you. They were blinded by their jealousy. And they want to blame Moses. But skip to 19. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And that was, that was posted when the folks know they, they doing something wrong. They, they, want, they want some company. So they, they gathered all the congregation with them. They want somebody to go with them. No. One day, our brother got me. Hey, bro, we trying to get together because see, we 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 don't we we don't agree. I appreciate what brother Boo is doing. We're gonna get together. We're gonna we're gonna call brother Boo, and we're gonna get him on the phone. And we want you to be there with us. What time? Sunday at two o'clock. Okay, I just want to know what time. Not to answer my phone. <laughs> but go ahead, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. So the Lord appeared. The Lord appeared, and he told Moses, Separate yourself from these people. I'm going to consume them all. The Lord is going to kill them all. And said, Moses and Aaron, he's going to kill them all. And what happened? Go ahead. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin 
And will thou be wroth with all the congregation? So the Lord, so Moses said, now everybody didn't, didn't sin, but the Lord is going to kill them all. Because of these few people with bad behavior. But Moses prayed for them. Moses, Moses in, intercede. He was an intercessor. He intercedes. And what did the Lord do? Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Now, now when the Lord is speaking, now all these people that gathered around the tabernacle, and the Lord appeared, nobody hear him but Moses and Aaron. But the Lord told Moses, tell these people to get away from these guys. Go ahead. And Moses rose up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. Go ahead. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. And so Moses told people, what did the people do? Go ahead. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. So the people got away from them. And they come out their tent. They probably wonder, why, why, why everybody gone? Why everybody leaving us? But they, you see, they was afraid of the Lord. But go ahead, brother. And Moses said, hereby. Ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own hand. He said, you know the Lord sent me. I have not done them of my own hand, because the Lord was, Moses was working for the Lord. And what happened, brother? 31. 31. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground claved asunder that was under them. So, uh, the, go ahead. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertain unto Korah, and all their goods. So the earth opened up, an earthquake came, opened up and swallowed them all up, and everything that they own, even if their families. But you got, that's why you got to be careful also, brothers and sisters, about your behavior. You don't know who, is, it's just not you alone, you're not an ally, you don't know who is tied to you. So these people, because of their behavior, got their whole family killed. And go ahead. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Let the earth swallow us up also. And, and like I said, these were men of renown. So the Lord is not a respect of person. He don't care what your position is. What your position is. But these men, because of their wickedness, their evil behavior, got their wives and their children killed also. Because you don't know who, who is entangled with you. But go ahead, brother. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And these were those princes from every nation. These also were men of status. They also were men of status. But the thing is, these people, they jealousy, and they, could, and they got together and they concocted this, this wicked evil scheme to overthrow Moses, Moses basically. The Lord destroyed them and everything that was tied to them. That's why I say you can't let no bad behavior run through that. You have to deal with it. But let's, let's look at this. Let's show, let me show you. Let's skip the 41. Let me show you what kind of stock we come out of. Let me show you our forefathers and, four, and, and foremothers, the matriarchs and the patriarchs that, that, that we come out of. Get the 41. Go ahead, brother. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. Now, the next day, they murmured against Moses and Aaron, You don't kill the people of the Lord. 
Moses didn't make that earthquake. He didn't make the earth open up. They saw Moses and Aaron standing there and saying, the Lord is will show you who's running, who's running this. But that's the, that's the stock we come out of. That's Israel, the very next day. But go ahead, brother. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. So now the, the, Lord, the Lord see it. He saw them. So he came again. And go ahead, brother. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. So the Lord said again, Get away from these people. I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to consume them all in a moment. Go ahead. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on incense. So Moses fell, but he fell on his face again to pray to the Lord. But the Lord didn't hear him. The Lord had already sent that plague. And Moses saw it. And Moses had to do something. He had to move, he had to make, take some action because the Lord was, had already started killing everybody. Go ahead. And go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath, for, for there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. He said, the plague has begun. The Lord sent that plague out. He had already started. And Moses had to get up and Moses had to actually do something. So sometimes you're down there, you're praying on your knees and nothing is happening. You might have to get up and do something. Yeah. Fix what's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Then the Lord might move. But the Lord had already started. Go ahead, brother. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. Go ahead. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700. Beside them that died about the matter of Korah. So all these people died. Because of the misbehaving of these few people. But the Lord had already stopped. Before Moses could even get up off his knees, the Lord had already sent that plague out there. And Moses had to get up and he had to move. He had to do something. He couldn't just sit there. I guess, and that, that's good that the Lord gave Moses that type of power and authority. You know, if that was up, the Lord kill him. <laughs> they hard headed. I told them. <laughs> so the Lord know who to give it to, give, give it to. And the Lord was gonna kill him, and he would have killed all of them except Moses. And Aaron, it would have been a whole new batch of Hebrew Israelites. Because all he needed was one male, and he had two. But go ahead, brother. And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. And this plague was from the Lord. Because, brothers and sisters, and that's what people don't understand also, brothers and sisters. Like when uh, this COVID was out there, that was a plague. They said, well, man made this. They try. Man cannot destroy God's creation. Only God can destroy his creation. Even Satan can't kill God's creation. And when he do kill, he, he do it at the request of the Lord. So the Lord can stop that thing. But the point is, brothers and sisters, misbehaving of one or, or a few can damage many if no one put it in check. So that's why we have to watch our behavior if we don't want to get dealt with. But let's look at another one. Let's go to Joshua, the sixth chapter. Joshua 6. We're going to pick it up at 1. And 
And this is when the Lord delivered Jericho to Joshua and Israel. Joshua 6 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. So the Lord had already delivered Jericho to Joshua and to Israel. But now he's he putting fear into the hearts of the people of Jericho. Because he could have just had that angel knock that wall down. But he's showing his might. Go ahead. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And go ahead. And it, and it shall come to pass that then when, when they make that a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. The well, Lord told him how he's going to do it, but the Lord also told him something else. Skip to 17. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein. So the Lord told Israel, the city shall be a curse, and everything that's in it shall be a curse. Go ahead. To the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messenger that we sent. So the only person that the Lord said will live is a harlot, and a harlot is a woman of the night. So that lets you know that the Lord... He, he, now, he killed all these renowned men of Israel, but he let this harlot live? That lets you know the Lord is not a respecter of person. He don't care what your position is. If you cross him, he will deal with you. And because of her, because she believed her faith and she saved these spies, everybody in her household, everybody connected to her was saved also. Because of her good behavior. But go ahead, brother. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves a curse. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. So the Lord told him, he told him, don't take nothing, nothing from there. Destroy everything. He said, everything. He said, but he told about the silver and the gold and the vessel of iron. I concentrate to the Lord. Bring that back. But he told, he told him exactly what to do. But go ahead, brother. Verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they took the city, just like the Lord told them they would. But you always got somebody who, not listen, who don't listen, not paying attention. And because of that, others suffer. Let's go to Joshua 7 chapter and pick it up at 1, 7 and 1. Joshua 7 and 1. Go ahead, brother. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took up the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now, it sounds like everybody did something. <laughs> it sounds like everybody did what they weren't supposed to do. But go ahead. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ahi, which is beside Bethavin, on the east of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up 
and viewed the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. So they, so they had knocked off Jericho. Now they see this little, little, little country, Ai. They ready to knock it off. So Joshua told people, go and, view, go and spy it out like we did Jericho. Go ahead. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So the men came back and told Joshua, man, we don't need to send everybody up there. That little old place, we can knock them out. Send, we, we can send the B team. <laughs> we, we can send the hustle, Memphis hustle. We ain't got to send the Grizzly. Well, maybe we should. Half of them, over half of them hurt. But anyway, <laughs> they say, we don't have to send to knock this little old place out. We just knocked out Jericho and all they mighty men of valor. Yeah, go ahead, what happened? So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ahi. So and they sent them up. So Joshua, listen, he sent them up there. And this little, this, this little country beat them. Put them on the run. Go ahead. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even to Shebarim, and smote them to the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. So, so they was so they whooped them and had them, put them on the run. But go ahead. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord. Until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. So him and the elders of Israel, I guess all of them, I put ashes up on their head, and they prayed to the Lord. They prayed to the Lord. Skip to 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lies thou thus upon thy face. So the Lord told Joshua, Get up. Why are you laying on your face? Go ahead. Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. So Lord said, they have sinned and they have put that, their stuff among, the stuff they stole among their stuff, and I told them not to. So now Joshua have to clean house. He have to get up and do something. Go ahead. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the curse from among you. So the Lord told him, I'm not going to hear you no more. Then he said, I will not be with you anymore. I will not listen to you anymore until you do something. You're on your face praying to me. Do something. Fix this problem before you come praying to me. Because I'm not going to help you. So Joshua had to do something, just like Moses. He had to get up and do something. Skip to 16. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Jebu and Jedi was taken. So he started going through, questioning all the people. Finding out what was going on. Go ahead. And he brought his household by, man by man. And Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zebdi, the son of Zerah, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confessions unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Joshua came to him like a man of God. He said, my son, give I pray thee. What the heck have you done? And what did he do? Go ahead. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed have I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. So he confessed. Now he, he confessed. He may have saved himself from the lake of fire, but he did not save himself from the wrath of God. Skip to 24. And Joshua and all Israel's with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, 
and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And what they do to him? Go ahead. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. So this man, because of his, one, because of his behavior, got his whole family and all his belongings, even his poor sheep and oxen, they probably walked around like, what do we do? <laughs> but they, they were connected to him. That was a one person behavior. If you don't stump it out, if you don't stop it, if you don't fix it, you get a whole lot of people hurt, if not killed. So you have to deal with it. And because when something happens and you ignore it, bad things can happen. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9. nine. Ecclesiastes 9. Because uh, one person can undo a whole lot of good. I've had people come up to me, and I tell them about Israel. God, oh, oh, no, oh, oh, I'm not going there. I ran into a brother that God, y'all crazy. That brother tried to run my life. He, uh-uh. Say, who was he? <laughs> Give me name. I don't even know who he was. He probably been here twice. But he put, he tainted. The name of the Israel of God. If you, and if you notice, the Israel of God don't affiliate with any other group. Are you, oh, you're a Hebrew Israelite. Are you with, nope, nope, not with them. Are you, nope, nope, not with them. we the Israel of God. That's it. And we don't know what they're teaching or what they're doing over there. So we can only account for what we are doing. Because one person can mess up, mess it up. Everybody. Just like at the feast. We, we, we used to have a bar. We had all everything you wanted at the bar. But one person at one camp, well on the other side of the country, got drunk in the parking lot and shut it down for everybody. One person. But they saw it was a problem, and they had to do something about it so it wouldn't get worse. But Ecclesiastes 9 and 17, 9 and 17. Go ahead, brother. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Go ahead. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. You, you could talk yourself out of war. You got some wisdom. Go ahead. But one sinner destroy much good. But one sinner destroy much good. One sinner destroy much good. He talked about all them. I thought y'all righteous over there. Y'all ain't but, nothing but a bunch of devils. Because one person, all this over 40 years of building this brand up, one person can destroy. Can destroy. Let's go to Galatians, the sixth chapter. Because some people also, the other side of that, some people have faults, they do something. You, you, you can help them. Help them if you can. See if you can bring them back. Galatians 6, I'm going to pick it up at 1. If somebody uh, uh, <coughs> falls fall to, the, to the wayside, you see them going through something, you can help them, help them. Don't condemn them. Because you condemn them, then you can't bring them back. But Galatians 6 and 1, go ahead, brother. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And go ahead. Bear ye one another's burden, 
and so fulfill the law of Christ. So bear you one another, bear, 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 be, be compassionate. See if you can help the person. If, if you can't help them, then turn them over to God. But don't just condemn them right away. Go ahead. For if a man think himself to be something, we he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. He conceiveth himself. Go ahead. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So don't be worrying about, like I said before, brothers, we come here to get, learn how to get salvation. Not to be worrying about what other people are doing. We got to take care of ourselves. If we can help somebody, help them. But glory in your own, be able, be able to glory in your own work. Make sure your work is good. And that's a good feeling when you know your work is good and what you're doing is good. Go ahead, brother. Where are we? Verse 5. Verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. And that is true. Every man shall bear his own burden. Burden. So you don't have time to worry about what somebody else is doing. Skip to seven. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So that's what, what you put out there, you're going to get it back. So you got to be careful. Go ahead. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So he that doeth to, to this, earthly state, this earthly stuff, then you shall reap corruption. Go ahead. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So he that soweth to the Spirit, if your behavior and your conduct is Christ-like, then you will get eternal life. You will get eternal life. But brothers and sisters, there are some people, like I said, if you can help somebody, help them. But there are some people that you just cannot help. And let's, let me show, let, let, let's see it. Let's go to Isaiah 26. When we one verse, there's some people that are just wicked and you cannot help them. You just have to turn them over to God. And I will say pray for them, but you'll weigh out two good pair of knees. Isaiah 26 and 10. Go ahead, brother. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. So let favor be to, to, uh, shown to the wicked, and he will not learn righteousness. You see somebody, home, now you, and you know he's a thief, and he's homeless out on the street. You say, man, I got an extra, I got a spare bedroom. You can come stay with me until you get yourself back together. You go to work, come back, your whole house is clean now. <laughs> so no matter what good, you, you, no matter how you try to help them, you just cannot help them. Go ahead. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. And even in the land of uprightness, he'll around a whole lot of righteous people saying everybody doing good. He's trying to th think of a way to get over on everybody. And they don't, even, they don't even uphold the majesty of the Lord. They don't even accept the Lord and his power. But let's go to Jeremiah, the 12th chapter, because Jeremiah asked a question about this. Jeremiah 12, we're going to pick it up at 1. Jeremiah 12 and 1. He asked a question about this, a good question. Jeremiah 12 and 1. Twelve and one. Go ahead, brother, when you get it. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. But he came to the Lord right. Righteous art thou, O Lord. Yea, Lord, his props. Go ahead. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? He said, why is the wicked, why are these wicked people, why do they prosper? Like everything they do. It's right. Go ahead. Thou hast planted them. Yea, they have taken root. They grow. Yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art nearing their mouth 
and fall from their reign. They, don't, they, they always talk about loyal love, don't care nothing about the Lord. And everything they do seem to prosper. Everything they touch seem to turn to gold. You'd be like, Lord, why? Why do they prosper like that? Why do they, why do they seem like they always get, things always go right for them. But the Lord put this stuff in his book, brothers and sisters, for us so that we can understand. And those of us with some knowledge and understanding, we know. Let's go to Psalms, the 70, Psalm 73. Psalms 73, and we're going to pick it up at 1. 73 and 1. We know, we know, we know, all of us know some people, they're so wicked, they'll sell their own mama if it'll uh, bring them a profit. But then every time you see them, they seem like they, they always getting favors, always doing good. But, but if the Lord has tried to correct you so many times, so many times, and you can't be corrected, you are really, really in trouble then. 73 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as I have a clean heart. He said, God is good to Israel, even one that of a clean heart or a good heart. Go ahead. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well not slipped. He said, for me, my, my, my feet was almost gone. My, my steps had well not slipped. And why? Go ahead. For I was envious at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Go ahead. For there are no bands in their depths, but their strength is firm. Go ahead. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Go ahead. Therefore, pride compasses about them as about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Go ahead. Their eyes stand out with fatness that they have more than hard could wish. Go ahead. They are corrupt and speak wickedly. Concerning oppression, they speak lawfully. Go ahead. They set their mouths against the heavens and their tongues walking through the earth. He said, now when I saw these people, my feet almost slipped. I almost went out and did something stupid, something wicked, so I could prosper. But that's what this word will do for you. Keep you in line. Skip the 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. And go ahead. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. He said, I've done all this good for nothing. And I'm struggling, having a hard time. And these wicked people, I see them, they just prosper. My feet are, I almost went out and did something wicked and crazy. Skip to uh, 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Go ahead. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I therein. And then you, you, think, you think like that, and then you come into a place like this, and somebody teach you the truth? And you find out what their end going to be? He said, I don't want no part of that. Go ahead, brother. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou casted them down into destruction. How they brought into, the, into desolation, as in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. They are utterly consumed with terror, and that ultimate terror is the lake of fire. But they probably saw that the Lord had tried to correct and correct and correct, and they wouldn't change. He turned them over to a reprobate mind. But I'm going to show you about that reprobate mind. You get that reprobate mind, no matter what happens, you will not change. You'll be right there in front of you. You will not change. Let's look at two guys that were this way. People that have been wicked so long, and have done so much damage, the Lord has set them, marked them for destruction. 1 Samuel 2, we're going to pick it up at 12. 1 Samuel 2, we're going to pick it up at 12. 
1 Samuel 2 and 12. First Samuel 2 and 12. I can't count. Go ahead, brother. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. So these were sons of the priest. These both been, they both been teaching Israel, keeping Israel in line, teaching them how to serve the Lord to get salvation. Go ahead. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servants came. While the flesh was in seething, with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. Go ahead. And he stuck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh and hook brought up to the priest took for himself. So they did in shallow until all the Israelites that came thither. So that's what the priest portioned. The people were going to sacrifice the meat, but before they sacrificed, they had to boil it, and the priest could come. And boiling it softens it up. So when the priests come with that hook, whatever they get out is theirs. That's what they're putting. The Lord gave them that. But what did these boys do? Go ahead. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest's servants came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. But these boys... They were sending their servants. When the people get ready to do the service of the Lord, which is do the sacrifice, they would tell the people, no, the priest don't want that old boiled meat. They want raw meat. You know, they probably want the barbecue. You know, they would like that fried food. But he, so, so they, they was, 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 uh, uh, Turn the word of God in unrighteousness, because they were doing what the Lord said don't do. Go ahead. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desire, then he would answer him, nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I would take it by force. He said, and the people insist and don't want to do it, and they want to do it the right way, the way the Lord said do it. Tell them, no, I would, if you don't give it to me, I would take it by force. Go ahead. Wherefore the sins of the young men were very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. So they made the people hate making an offering to the Lord because they couldn't do it right. So you know these boys were in trouble. But skip 22. Now Eli was very old. And heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I have, for I hear of your evil dwellings by all this people. So Eli was old, but he heard what his sons were doing. And he didn't do nothing, he didn't fix it. And these boys were so wicked when the women came to the to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to pray, they would sleep with the women. They didn't come for that. They came to learn to pray how to get salvation. Just like some of these groups, some of these, these, these Hebrew groups, the women join and they go there to try to find out how to get salvation. And the brothers there try to try to. Turn, give, them, give them to a brother, but brother had two and three wives. They didn't come there for that. They came there for salvation. And that's what these boys were doing. And Eli did not do anything about it. But go ahead. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. And he knew they were making the Lord's people sin. And he should have dealt with it. 
Go ahead, brother. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord will slay them. But they didn't listen to their father because the Lord had marked them for death. They had a reprobate mind. The Lord, now their father did tell them, he told them, you sin against God, who's going to stand in the gap for you? There's nobody. And what y'all doing is bad, but because the Lord had marked them for death, they didn't even pay no attention to him. Skip to 27. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt, in Pharaoh's house? So this man of God came to Eli. Eli the priest. Eli was supposed to go to the people and tell them what the Lord said. Go ahead. And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honest thy son above me? to make yourselves fat with the cheapest of all offers of Israel, my people. So the Lord told him, you know, he talking to Eli, because Eli didn't do nothing to stop these boys. But he said, you have made yourself fat of this meat that they taken from the people. It's just like if you have a son that's a drug dealer, and you know he's wrong, and you tell him, son, you know you're wrong. You shouldn't be out there selling drugs, destroying the people. But then you're taking the money, buying you a new car, a new house. It's like you're saying, son, I know you're wrong, but as soon as you pay for this house, you need to stop. <laughs> and you're just as guilty. But where are we? Verse 30. Go ahead. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me, for them that honoreth me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Go ahead. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arms of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house. And he told him, I'm going to cut off your house. There would not nobody in your house would get to be old. I'm going to cut them all down. But the Lord had marked them for death. But let's go to the fourth chapter. Because see, Israel suffered because of the behavior of these boys. Samuel 4 and 1. 1 Samuel 4 and 1. Let's see what happened. Go ahead, brother. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Apex. So they went out to fight against the uh, uh, Philistines. They always beat them. So they want no thing. Go ahead. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines, and they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. So 4,000 men died that day. Skip the four. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hopni and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. So they sent for the priests in the ark of the covenant because they, they used to beat the Philistines. They were wondering, well, maybe that's why we're losing. We don't have the ark of the covenant going out before us. Skip to 10. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and they fled every man unto his tent. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. So now 34,000 has been killed. Of it, Israel has been killed because of these people, these, these boys' bad behavior. Go ahead. And the ark of God was taken 
and the two sons of Eli, Hopni and Phinehas, were slain. And that's what, those were the targets, because the Lord wanted to take them out. But all these people had to suffer because of their bad behavior. So as I said before, brothers and sisters, we're not on an island. You don't know who you are damaging with your behavior. Go ahead. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shallow the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. So the Lord sent, I always let somebody get away so he, they could tell what happened. Skip to 16. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, what is there done, my son? Go ahead. And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines, and there have been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hopna and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God was taken. Oh, he told me, your sons have been killed, and the ark of God was taken. And what happened? Go ahead. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell from off the seat backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck broke, and he died. For he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel 40 years. And that, that was the problem. Because back then, Israel was, the judges was the king. Because the judges ruled Israel. And he ruled them for 40 years. But when his boys went wicked, he didn't do nothing about it. And all these years were like 44,000, 34,000. Footman was killed because the Lord had marked them for death. They gave them a reprobate mind and had marked them for death. And Eli, because he didn't do nothing about it, because he didn't, he, he, he was supposed to have stoned these boys. But I guess he'd say because they're his flesh, he'll give them a pass. And because of that, the Lord took him out. They say he was, he was old, he had got heavy and sitting on that on, on that perch, and when they told him about the Ark of the Covenant, he fell off and broke his neck. That angel probably pushed him off <laughs> and started singing, Humpy Dumpy <coughs> had a great fall. <laughs> but let's see what happened if you can't be corrected. If someone keeps, let, let's go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29 and 1. And this is how I know these boys of Eli's had a reprobate mind. Proverbs 29 and 1. Proverbs 29 and 1. Go ahead, brother. He that been often reproved hardened his neck. So he that been often corrected, get a hard head or a stiff neck and don't want to obey, what happened? Go ahead. Shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. And that is without remedy. Nobody, there's nothing nobody can do. Once the Lord marked you for death, there's nothing nobody can do. To stop it. You are gone. And that's how I know them boys had a reprobate mind. But let's go to Romans, the first chapter. So that's why we say, if you see somebody doing wrong, you can't, you can't uh, uh, correct them. You can't deal with them. Get rid of them. But you got to clean your own behavior before you can try to tell somebody else to clean theirs up. That's why I say that purging starts with the person in the mirror. But uh, Romans 1, we're going to pick it up at 18. Romans 1 and 18. And this is to the, to the people. This is to the people that know better, that know the Word of God. They're supposed to be Christians, basically. Go ahead. 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That is, those who know the truth. Because everybody that's been here, you've been here long enough, you know what sin is. Those are the ones that know the truth but won't tell it to somebody, tell them something different so they can take advantage of them. You're holding the truth in unrighteousness. Go ahead. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it unto them. Because God has showed it unto them. They sit in front of somebody that has taught them the truth. And instead of trying to help that person get salvation, you want to use that word of God for your benefit. Go ahead, brother. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because anybody who's been here long enough, you know who, what the Godhead is. You know how many is in the Godhead. You know the truth. You know it. But skip to 24. Now skip... Uh, uh, 21. Go ahead, 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And their foolish heart was darkened. Skip to uh, 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. To dishonor their own bodies. And how's that? Go ahead who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And they served the creature more than the creator. People talk about, well, you know, the Indians, they, uh, the Indians, uh, they worship eagles and, and all kinds of animals. And the Egyptians, you know, they the cobras. And, well, you worship that blue-eyed, that, that blue uh, uh, blonde-haired person on your wall. Ain't that a, ain't that a creature? Believe it or not, we are critters. We are his creation. But go ahead, brother. Where are we? Verse 26. 26. Go ahead. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. So he said because of this, the Lord gave them up to vile affection. And people want to say it's okay. They were born that way. No, they're not. They can't help it. Yes, you can. You, you can help. You, you can stop anything if you know what the consequences are. I say, well, no, I'm just there. I can't help but steal. I got to steal. I just got to steal. You tell me, you come in my house still, son. I'm going to cut both your hands off. I bet they could stop there. I found out, you know what the consequences are? You can stop it. If you knew that the end result is burned forever in the lake of fire, bet you can stop it then. Go ahead, brother. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. And that's it. That's, the Lord cursed them. That was a curse. Go ahead. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Go ahead. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And God turned them over to a reprobate mind. You keep doing evil and keep doing evil, that God will fix it. God will fix it where you can't change. Because he done marked you for death. So you need to so that way say, fix your behavior. You say you're a Christian, that means you're Christ-like. And people say, well, you know, people can't help it. They're born that way. If that's the case, if God killed them, he would be wrong. And we know he's not wrong. But where are we, brother? Verse 32. 32. Skip, uh, do, skip to 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which committed such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, 
but have pleasure in them that do them. And you can't even have pleasure in them that do it. Because if you know better, you see somebody doing wrong, you're supposed to correct it. Well, it ain't got nothing to do with me. You can't always walk away. If you see something going wrong, you need to do something about it. If you can. But you don't side with wicked people. Let's go a little further. Let's go to 2 Chronicles, the 18th chapter. Because you don't side with wicked people. Because what they got coming, you'll get it. 2 Chronicles 19, and we're going to pick it up. I mean, 18. 2 Chronicles 18, we'll pick it up at 1. Like, boy, now I'm going to stop giving my notes. Second Chronicles 18 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. Now, Jehoshaphat, he was a righteous king. And Ahab was a wicked king. There was the, the husband of Jezebel. And he was wicked, but he joined side with this wicked king. And he had riches. The, that's right, the Lord's servant can be rich. They can have good stuff. They're not the only one that get the, 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 the top chef stuff. We're entitled to it, too. Go ahead. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Now, that's, and I understand sometimes, you know, you want to hang with your brothers, but you can't if they're not right. Go ahead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. Like I say, sometimes you want to hang with your people. But they'll turn on you. Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So Jehoshaphat said, you know, uh, he's a man of God. He said, yeah, I'll go with you, but... Inquire of the Lord. See what the Lord says. Go ahead. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets, 400 men, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it unto the hands, into the king's hands. So he called 400 prophets, and they all said the same thing. Go up. The Lord will deliver them into your hand. Go ahead. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Now, Jehoshaphat knew something. I mean, he, he was suspicious. Yeah. Now, you had 400 prophets. You had 400 prophets and I already told you to go up. Then he said, Wait, is there, is, is there not one that we can inquire of? And go ahead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. So, so, so yeah, there is one, but I hate him. Because he always prophesies evil. What else can he proph prophesy? Ahab was evil. He was married to an evil woman. And they did evil things. So what did he expect? And where are we, brother? Verse 8. Verse 8, go ahead. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. So this I know that he... That he that, uh, 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 Ahab had, had a reprobate mind. Skip the 14. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up, 
and prosper. And they shall be delivered unto your hand. And that's the same thing they, those 400 prophets said. So he heard the same thing. But what did the king say? Go ahead. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? So if he knew he was lying, he knew those 400 prophets was lying. Well, go ahead. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains. So he said, okay, you want the truth? I'm going to give you the truth. Go ahead. As sheep that have no shepherd. That means they have no king. Go ahead. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. So they have no master. That means the king ain't coming back. Go ahead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil. But he just he told he did prophesy good. But he knew he was lying. He said, I adjure you. How many times must I adjure you to tell me what the Lord said? And he told him what the Lord said. Go ahead. Again he said, <laughs> Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Now those, those angels go ahead. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And fall at Ramoth Gilead. The Lord had marked him for death. And he couldn't circumvent that nowhere around it. Go ahead. And another spake, saying, after this manner, and another saying, after that manner. Then there came out of a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. So he told him what's going to happen. If you go to battle, the Lord marked you for death. And all he showed him, the Lord said, his spirit will be a lying, lying spirit in the mouth of all your prophets. He told him everything. Go ahead. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. So he told him what's going to happen. Then one of the prophets went and they, they slapped Micaiah. But skip to 24. And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Go ahead. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon and govern of the city and to Joh Joh Joash, the king's son. Go ahead. And said, Thus said the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. Go ahead. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then have not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, hearken all ye people. So Micaiah said, oh, if you return in peace, then the Lord ain't spoken to me. Go ahead. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. So they went up anyway. That's why I know he had a reprobate mind. The prophet of the Lord just told him, if you go up there, you are not coming back. And what else? Go ahead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself, and I will go to the battle, but put thou on thy robe. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to battle. Now Jehoshaphat was, was a righteous king, but he wasn't too smart. Now they just, now the prophet just told him what's going to happen, that the Lord had marked Ahab for death. So Ahab, and now he, he go to, he gonna go to war with Ahab. Ahab not going to war with him. He going to help Ahab fight his battle. And Ahab tell him, well, you, uh, let me do it. I'm gonna put on a disguise. And you put on your kingly robe. And we're gonna go to battle. He okay. Like, man, I'm here to help you, and you're gonna sit, put me on the front line? You crazy. I'm gonna see you. But according to the prophet, I won't see you. But, but that's how I know he had a reprobate mind. Go ahead, brother. 
Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And that's the Lord. The Lord had the, had the king of Syria, Syria pull some men aside and said, Don't worry about nobody else. Go straight for the king. Take him out. Go ahead. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, Is it is the king of Israel. Because Jehoshaphat had the kingly robe on. They had was in disguise. So when they saw him, they said, there he is. Go ahead. Therefore, they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. And the Lord stepped in because he was a righteous man. Even though he sided with a wicked person, the Lord gave him a break. The Lord stepped in. The manger boy probably told him, that's not him. When they got around, he went to screaming and hollering. <laughs> Go ahead. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariot perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And they, while they, they found they knew it wasn't him, they turned away. Go ahead. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. So now, this, this guy... Just happen to pull a bow, let it, let the arrow go, and arrow just happened to strike Ahab in a part of point, uh, a place on his armor where he was protected, and struck him. When the Lord marked you, when the Lord got you marked, <coughs> ain't no getting away. Yes, sir. There's no getting away. Go ahead. Therefore, he said to his chariot man, "Turn thine hand." that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the, the Syrians until the evening, and about the time of the sun going down, he died. Now the Lord gave Jehoshaphat a break because he was righteous. He gave him a break because he was righteous. But Ahab was marked. And he took him out. But let's go on into chapter 19, picking up at verse 1. 19 and 1. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace at Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanai, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee. From before the Lord, go ahead. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. He said, "The Lord angry at you, but because you was righteous, and your behavior was good." Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again, though the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, and brought them back unto the Lord. God of their fathers. So he, the Lord gave him a break because he was righteous, because of his behavior. But the Lord ain't going to do that all the time. Let's go to chapter 20 and pick it up at 30. Chapter 20, we pick it up at 30. Thirty through 32. Go ahead, brother. So the ram of Jehoshaphat was quiet. For his God gave him rest round about. So God gave him rest. Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhai. Go ahead. And he walked in the way of Asa, his father, and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So he kept doing what was right. In the sight of the Lord, however, skip the 35. And after this, did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with H Hosea, king of Israel, who did very wickedly. So he joined side again with a wicked king. Go ahead. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go over Tarshish. And they made the ships of Ezan Gunberg. Go ahead. And Eleazar, the son of Dodovan, of Myri, Shop of Mirashaf prophesied against 
Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Hazariah, the Lord hath broken thy works, and the ships were broken, that they were not able to go to Tarshish. So sometimes the Lord, he might give you a break, but he will break your works. The Lord didn't kill them then either, but he broke, their, he, he broke those ships where they couldn't go nowhere. So he might not get you, but he will break your works. But Jehoshaphat, he learned, he learned after that. He didn't do nothing else after that. But let's go to Pro Proverbs 1. Because you don't consent with sinners. Proverbs 1 and 10. 1 and 10. If you get that, brother, you can go ahead. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If a sinner can entice you, consent with them not, no matter who they are. Skip to 15. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Reframe thy foot from their path. Why, go ahead. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Go ahead. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privately for their own lives. Because what they plan to do to other somebody else is going to come back on them. And if you're with them, if you uh, 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 align yourself with them, you will get it also. So I don't care who it is, don't consent with them. If you know they're doing wicked, don't consent with them. Why? Even if it's your husband, you know they're doing wicked, send them on out there by themselves. Let's go to, let me show, Lord got an example of that. Let's go to Acts the fourth chapter. When he, comes, when, he, when he come up with something that's evil and wicked and want to go out and do it, that's the time. Fake one of them headaches. <laughs> Acts 4 and 33. Acts 4 and 33. Go ahead, brother. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Go ahead. Neither was there any among them that, that lacked, for as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. Go ahead. And laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according to as he had need. So the people would, would sell. They, they, had, they had stuff. They would sell it and bring the money to the apostles. And the apostles would spread it out to the people that needed it. But you always got somebody who think they smarter than God. They could beat the system. Go into the fifth chapter and pick it up at one. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. So and Ananias kept, and his wife, they sold a possession. Go ahead. And kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Go ahead. And Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? He said, you ain't keeping back from Peter. You ain't, you ain't keeping back from us. You keep it back. You, you, you lying to the, to the Holy Ghost. You lying to God. You didn't make, obviously somebody made a vow, said we're going to sell this land and we're going to give you all the money. And obviously somebody came up with an idea that, no, once they sold it, no, we're not going to give them the money. We're going to keep half of it. But go ahead. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? What has thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men. But unto God. Go ahead. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. So then the Lord killed them. Go ahead. And the young men arose, wound him, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Go ahead. And it was about the space of three hours later when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. So the wife, as I always say, she probably was out shopping. With her part of the money. 
You know, how buying her some red bottom sandals and <laughs> all that good stuff. And people out three hours, hey, he, she probably, hey, that fool ain't come back yet. He probably took his portion and went and got him some a harlot and ran off on me. Let me see what's going on. So now she come in. Go ahead. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. She could have saved herself right there. We all respond for our own salvation. She could have come clean. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tip the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Go ahead. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and Carried her forth, buried her beside her husband. So, so somebody come up with a wicked scheme, no matter who it is, don't go along with them and don't make promises you don't plan on keeping. Mm -hmm. That the Lord don't like that either. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, because obviously somebody made a, 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 a vow. Somebody agreed to give all the money. It was good. It sounded good. In the beginning, but once they had that money in their hand, going through their fingers, man, that feel good. Now I think I'm a cup, of, I'm a cuff a little bit of it. Won't nobody know, but the Lord knew. Ecclesiastes five and four. Go ahead, brother. When thou vows a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he have no pleasures in fools. Pay that. Which thou hast vowed. And he has no pleasure in fool. You try to, to trick the Lord, you are a fool. Go ahead. But it is that thou shouldest not vow, than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. He said, better to vow and uh, uh, not, better to not vow than not pay. Go ahead. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. And we know what this, this on the street, know what the streets say about that. Neither say thou before the angel, that is what is an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice? And destroy the works of thy hand. We saw the Lord, how the Lord will destroy your works. He might not destroy you, but he will destroy your works. I mean, hope if your righteousness is good, he's not ready to take you out yet. But let's go to Proverbs 18. But that was that Holy Ghost Peter was talking about. You ain't lying to us, you lying to the Holy Ghost. Proverbs 18 and 6. Proverbs 18 and 6. Go ahead, brother. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. Go ahead. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Because your mouth can get you in a whole lot of trouble. Whole lot of trouble. Go ahead. The words of a tail bearer are as wounds. And they go down into the uttermost parts of the belly. And the word of tail bearer, some folks think that a tail bearer is somebody that's telling lies. But tail bearer is also someone that's going around talking business that's not their own. And they're talking about stuff that it is not doing any good. If you can't do any good, or if you're not trying to help the person, why even deal with it? If you see somebody uh, doing something in error, the thing to do is go to that person. Brother says, you know what you're doing is wrong. Against God, you need to get yourself corrected. The Lord going to deal with it. You don't go through, oh, that, no, that brother ain't no good. He, I saw him last night at, at, the, at the strip club. Mm. And you ask them, well, why, how did you see him there? Were you there? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I'm the janitor. <laughs> Yeah, you're in there cleaning up all right. <laughs> but if I ain't going to do any good, don't, don't go around talking about it. Go ahead. Skip, the skip, skip to 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, that they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Because if you run in your mouth, the things you say going to come back to you. They're going to come back to you. That's why I say you should eat 
the fruit thereof. Let's go look at this tongue. Let's go to James, James the third chapter, James 3. And we just got four after this. Y'all get out here and time it. Don't get dark till 8.30. I, I timed it yesterday. <laughs> James 3 and 1. Go ahead, brother. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Because we know those who know better are going to receive the greater condemnation. We're going to be held to the, even the most high standard. Now, a lot of people, they be want to teach. They be want to be able to claim. Oh, I can't wait. I can't. Let me. You don't know what you're asking for. You don't know what you're asking for. Go ahead, brother. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bribe the whole body. So if you don't, you, we offend a lot of things, but if you can offend not in word. If you can hold your tongue, you are doing good. You are, you, you can bribe the whole body. You, you got super strength. Now, my wife Pearl, we used to be arguing all the time. She, we, not all the time. We used to argue sometimes. She, I'm like, look, I'm tired of this. I don't want to hear no more. Just, just, just be quiet. Mm-hmm. Now, you just can't keep your mouth shut. You just got to say something to you. If you say so. Just, that tongue, you just got to get it out there. Go ahead, brother. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Go ahead. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven with fierce wind, yet are they turned about with a very small hand. Whithersoever the governor listens. Go ahead. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Because everything starts with words. And that tongue is a little member, but grows both great things. I remember when I was in the military, I was in the Marines, this sergeant. He walk around there, he was no, he no taller than this. He was about 4'6. <laughs> Talk much trash. When I first met him, I was in the wreck. When my husband body talking, just going, I'm like, who is that boasting? You won't touch a picture of me. <laughs> I rip off your head and poke dirt down your neck. You don't know who you mess with. I'm like, who is this? I'm going, I'm like, I got to see who this is. I go out there, I'm expecting to see somebody 6'4", and he 4'6". <laughs> but talking big trash. That tongue boasts great things. Go ahead. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among your mem our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Because your, your mouth can write a check. Your mind can't cash. Get your whole body in trouble. Your mouth get to run it. What's the first thing somebody do? They're going to hit you in the eye. The eye be like, what I do? <laughs> that mouth gets your whole body in trouble. Go ahead, brother. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. Even the elephants. You see the men riding elephants. Even the wild, the lions and the tigers and the bears, they, friend with they tame everything. They can't tame that mouth. Go ahead. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Un full of deadly poison. If the, Lord, if the Lord had made us to feed us through our ears and then give us a mouth, we'd probably be all right. But when he gave us that tongue, he got us all in trouble. Go ahead, brother. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, 
and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. That's what we do with the same mouth. Go ahead. Out of the mouth, out of the same mouth, proceeded blessings and curses. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. He said, these things are not to be. You shouldn't have, you, you can't be w- wicked and righteous. But out of the same mouth, you praise the Lord. Then somebody says, so Mary, what you do, what you say to me? Now, five minutes later, go ahead. Verse 13. Skip to 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works and meekness of wisdom. That's what you do. You have something to say, make sure it's positive and it can make a difference. Let's go to Jeremiah 24. Let's look at this. People say, well, you know. Jeremiah 23, well, you know, you can't keep them, old, them, them, them old command, those commandments too hard. They're a burden. You can't keep them. Jeremiah 23 and 33. We're going to see, let's see what your burden is. Go ahead, brother. And when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask these saying, what is the burden of the Lord? He said, what is the burden of the Lord? No, people tell you, as I just said, the burden of the Lord is the commandment. You can't keep them things. They're too hard. It's too hard not to steal. It's too hard not to, to covet this, somebody else's stuff. Go ahead. Thou shalt then say unto them, what burden? He said, what burden? The Lord ain't got, don't put no burdens on you. Go ahead. I will even forsake you, save the Lord. Go ahead. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people, that shall say, the burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. He said, anybody that say the burden of the Lord, I will punish that man and his house. Go ahead, skip to 36. And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. Well, go ahead. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the word of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, he said, our God. He said, every word. Your word shall be your burden. So be careful what you say. That's a part of your behavior. Mm-hmm. That's why Jesus said this. Let's go to Matthew 12. Matthew 12 and 34. Twelve and thirty-four, Matthew twelve and thirty-four. Go ahead, brother. O generations of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you speak what's in your heart. You might try to conceal it, but sooner or later, it's gonna be like that burning fire shut up in your bones. It's coming out. Go ahead. A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man. Out of the evil treasures, bring it forth evil things. Go ahead. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's why your words are your burden. Because every word you speak, you're going to give account of. You, it's going to come back to you. And when I say be careful walking around talking about people, let's go to 1 Peter 2, and we got one after this. 1 Peter 2 and 1. Have we read, Lord, not no respect of person. He don't care who you are, what your position is. The Lord don't have no little cliques. He's all in. Are you all out? First Peter 2 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. And that we got to do. Put all that mess aside because we're working for something greater. Skip to 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts. 
which war against the soul. Because this body, this flesh is trying to kill you. It's trying to commit suicide on you. Go ahead. Having your conversations honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. So your conversation be good. Even your conversation needs to be good. Because even though people speak evil of you, your behavior will show that they're lying. Like right now, we've got all these hate groups out there, these, these Hebrew camps that's been all kind of hate and vitriol. And they supposed to be a religious organization? And now you got these Gentile groups getting out there. They showing all this stuff. And they, and they showing. See how hateful these people are? They say they the true people of God. Look how they talking. Look at all this hate they spitting. But if your behavior is right and they say that about you, but when they say it about the Israel of God, but they can't pull up nothing, show contrary. They can't pull up nothing to show that we are that way. That's why I said we don't affiliate with other people. Not because we think we better or we think we know more. We don't know what they are doing out there. We all account for us. And our job is to teach the world how to get salvation. And that's why we come in here. But go ahead, brother. Where are we? Verse 13. Go ahead. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme. Say, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Obey the laws of the land for the Lord's sake. Because they can't say, oh, that group over there, they don't even obey the laws. They think they sovereign citizens. They don't have to obey the law. Like you got this group out there that's actually saying that they, they live in here in these people's country. How about they don't have to obey these people's laws? They sovereign citizens. This is Hebrew Israelites. And everyone I know that went to court with that same argument, fought the law, and the law won. They still talk about, well, I'm not, you can't lock me up. I'm not a citizen. Clink, get them handcuffs off of me. I'm not a citizen. <coughs> but I'm like, well, that's okay. They got places for non citizens. They housed them at 201 too. But go ahead, brother. Or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. And the praise of them that do well. Go ahead. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So by your behavior. You don't get nobody a reason to talk about you. And they see your behavior. They see what you're doing. And you may even bring them in. Let's go to the, first, uh, uh, the fourth chapter. Pick it up at 14. 1 Peter 4 and 12. I'm sorry. 12. Then we'll skip to 14. 4 and 12. Go ahead, brother. Beloved. They get not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Because we all go through stuff. That don't mean you have to pull away from the Lord. Skip to 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. And their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. So if you've been, if, if, if you are chastised for the glory of God, be happy. Be happy. And also, go ahead. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a biddy body in other men's matters. Go ahead. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, 
but let him glorify God on, his, on this behalf. So if you're going to suffer, let suffer because you're a Christian, because you're doing the right thing, because your behavior is good. You can't come up to somebody and say, man, the reason why they doing this to me, because of the curse, because I'm Israel. Now they doing this to you because you stole that man's car. But go ahead. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And the judgment began at the house of God because we're supposed to know better. We're supposed to tell, show other people how to correct their attitude, their behavior, how to be Christ-like so they can get salvation. So if it starts first at the house of God, What, 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 what uh, uh, chance do the other people have? Go ahead. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So if the righteous get by just by the skin of their teeth, <coughs> you know those that don't care nothing about the Lord is seriously in trouble. Go ahead. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keepings of their soul to him in well-doing. As unto a faithful creator. So those who, who uh, uh, suffer according to the will of God for being good, that's what you're doing. You're saving or keeping your soul or you working toward your eternal salvation. But sisters and brothers, no matter how much you know, how much wisdom and knowledge you have, if your behavior is not right, if your personal conduct is not in line with being Christ-like, you're still in danger of going to the lake of fire. Thank you for your time, brothers and sisters. Now we'll have the announcement.